being jostled a lot. <laughs> That's what I was saying. In these narwhal <laughs> power suits, as boy narwhals without horns, we're not getting any respect. Ow! I think you're right, bro. Hey, wait a second. The horn isn't growing out of the narwhal's forehead. It's growing out of the left side, above his mouth. Ow! This guy's too. Right. It's actually growing out of the upper jaw and protruding through the skin. It's a special tooth that grows super duper extra long. So if a narwhal horn is actually made of a tooth, then this horn is really a tusk. Thank you. So that's where the mistake was. No wonder that horn activation malfunctioned. Because technically, that horn isn't a horn at all. It's a tooth, a tusk. Of course, tusks. Tusks are teeth that protrude from the mouth like walrus and warthogs, or through the cheeks like elephants and narwhals. Where the tusk grows out of the jaw, through the cheek area, and out through the left side of the narwhal's face. This is exactly what I needed to know. Soon we're gonna have a horn. Oh, I mean tooth. Tusk, 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 tusk. Yeah, we've been calling it the wrong thing the whole time. We've gotta remember, it's a tusk. Tusk, tusk, tusk. Tusk, 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 tusk. tusk, tusk. Oh, hey! <laughs> so how old are you narwhals when you grow your tusk anyway? How old are you now? About two? Hey, what's this? Whoa, your narwhal tusk is growing! <laughs> Congratulations! I'm gonna name you Little Tusker. Whoa, Little Tusker! You are growing a tusk. Awesome! The narwhal power disc is complete. Thanks, Aviva. Now that I have the programming right, the narwhal DNA should direct a tusk to grow from the left side of your helmet. Jimmy? But I'm icing the cupcakes. Incoming! Oh, hold on! <laughs> Teleport! <laughs> Out with the old, in with the new. Okay, little Tusker, let's try this again. And I hope we get a tusk this time. Reactivate Norwal powers! Yes! Now this feels right. <laughs> Good luck finding it, guys. Oh. No disc, but I found a clam. Hey! <laughs> found another clam over here! Hey! Up, oh, just a rock, Jimmy. Whoa! Let's surface. Check it out. An otter has a special fold of skin, like a sack under her arm where she stores things that she collects on her dives. They should be up any second. A sea otter dive is usually about a minute and a half, but they can dive five minutes if they want to. I did it! I dove like a sea otter! Way to go, Jimmy! Did you find anything? It's just a rock so far. It wasn't as cool as a creature power disc, but Coach seemed to like it. <laughs> she took my clam, too. Sorry, Coach. You're not getting that clam open. My rock! Amazing! <laughs> That's the classic sea otter shellfish cracking method. Using a rock as a tool. It's genius. Hey, guys, the disc is still down there. Martin's gonna find it first if you don't get back in the game. Hey, put me down! Uh-oh, Coach, easy! She's not a shellfish. Well, at least the amphisub held up okay. Ugh. Aviva, coming in for repairs. The amphisub or Koki? Both. <laughs> I found it. I found the sea otter power disc. Shocker. Yeah, 
You kept diving while we checked out the otter's awesome tool use, not to mention saving Koki. Guys, fair is fair. Martin gets to activate sea otter power. Oh, yeah. This is going to be awesome. Activate sea otter power. Oh, yeah. Woo! I feel built for the water. Oh, warm coat. Paddle feet. Hydrodynamic body. Oh, woo! Let's go for a swim, coach. What's she doing? She's parking cork. Sea otters anchor their babies in kelp when they go off to look for food. That way, they don't drift away. Ooh, now that I have awesome sea otter swimming powers, can we swim through the kelp forest? Hey, bro. What's up, dude? I'm back at the Tortuga. And look who followed me home. Aww. We'll be right there. Wow, bro, you found a red panda? Well, I didn't really find her. She found me, and then she followed me home. Are you sure that's a red panda? Yeah, it's a lot smaller than a panda. Looks more like a raccoon. Or a fox. Or a weasel. Or a cat. So, what family of animals is a red panda most closely related to? Wait, 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 wait. I think I know this. Huh? I got it. Ahem. <clears throat> well, aren't you going to tell us? No. Nope. <laughs> you have to guess. It'll be more fun that way. Hmm. Okay, fine. Well, I'm going with bear. Just a small bear. I'll say the red panda is most closely related to the giant panda because they both have panda in the name. Nope, that's a trick. Giant pandas are in the bear family. This girl is not a bear. Oh, I know. Fox. She's reddish orange like a fox. And her face is kind of dog-like. <laughs> Our red panda disagrees. She is not in the dog family. Step aside, Jimmy. I'm going with Weasel, a member of the Mustelid family. Red Panda totally fits in with a Pine Martin, a Badger, and a Ferret. Oh, nice try. There is a lot of variation in the Mustelid family, from Weasels to Wolverines to Pine Martins to Otters, but the Red Panda doesn't belong there. What about Raccoons? And Kinkajous? And Coatis? Aha! Yes, I win! Victory! A little too quick on the celebrations, bro. Scientists used to think the red pandas belonged to this family, but not anymore. Aw, well, what is she then? Yeah, who's the red panda most closely related to? Yeah, who? Okay, I'll show you. A red panda? Yes, a red panda is in its very own family. It's in the family Alluridae. It has its own special family made up of just one species, the red panda. Wow! Oh, awesome! Yeah, it's a unique species in its own family. And red pandas are not only special, they are rare. Only 10,000 survive in the wild. A spirit bear. Yes, also called the Komodi bear. How could we have forgotten about them? This is the only place in North America where there are actually some black bears that are white. White black bears? Are they albino? No, not albino. It's just a rare hair color. Only about one in 10 black bears in this area are actually white like her. That's so cool. But why? Why are they white? Good question, and I'm glad you asked because it's time for a Krat Brothers experiment. Uh-oh. Are you sure about this? Oh, yeah. We gotta try to figure out why these bears are white. And it just might have something to do with fishing. Here I come, bears! Fish 
Mr. Bear. <laughs> Getting into position. I'm all ready, Aviva. Okay, Bears, on your marks. Get set. Go! Whoa, that's one for spirit. And one for Poplip. And another for spirit. Three fish to one, spirit pulls ahead. Now, where are those bears? Over there! It's off lip. Look out! Ooh, a miss from Paw Flip. Woo, we saw her dark body above us just in time. But where's Spirit? I don't see her. Ah, that's it. That could be why Spirit Bears have developed white fur. It helps them get more fish. Fish have trouble seeing them against the bright sky and frothy white water. Ah! That's another one for Spirit! Hmm, wait! Chris? All right, Spirit, I think you win. Yep, easy, girl. You win, ten to six. And you even found Chris. <laughs> the experiment's over. <laughs> oh, ah, ah, please don't eat me! Oh. Chris, are you all right? Yeah. Ugh. So, now we know. A spirit bear's white fur is harder for fish to see than a normal black bear's fur. That's why they catch more fish.